Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn. Today, I will be discussing some Timothy Zahn books that I think that you should read. Now, before you say anything or think, wait a second, why aren't Star Wars books on this list? S Timothy Zahn's Star Wars books are quite a bit different than his regular works that he does, and I will do separate videos talking about his Star Wars works, but today I wanted to focus on specifically the Timothy Zahn books that are in his own universe, his novels that he's written. Um, I've written quite a few, or not, I've read, wow, I've read quite a few of them. Um, uh, not all of them, not even most of them, but I've read quite a few of them, and there are some that I highly recommend that I want to go ahead and suggest, and uh, you'll you'll get a little bit of an understanding of what kind of books he writes with these. The first books I'm going to talk about are his most recent books, his most recent trilogy that he wrote, which is called the Sybil's War Trilogy. It includes three books. You have Pawn, you have Knight, and then you also have Queen. Now, as you're looking at this trilogy, you'll probably notice a theme of chess, chess terms that he used while uh, creating this trilogy. And what this trilogy is about is a character, um, uh, Nicole, is basically on Earth and she's part of this gang and she gets kidnapped uh, by this weird alien thing. And she is basically taken to this ship, which she can't get off, which is in the middle of space. She doesn't know where it is or what's going on, but basically she is forced to do this work in this place. And what makes this trilogy so interesting is you see Nicole have to, one, uncover the mysteries of this universe, and at the same time, she has to take over uh, and win the uh, the war, the Sybil's War, that basically starts. And she's one of the few people that has the ability to become a Sybil, which is the people who are able to communicate with the ship. This ship is called the Ferantha. I think that's how you pronounce it. I've never heard it pronounced, but it, the ship's called the Ferantha. And it is just, um, it's a fun little story. One criticism of the book is that it was supposed to f be a five-book series, um, uh, and instead he was forced to shorten it to three books when that was all he could get uh, contract-wise with Tor Publishing. So as a result, it feels a bit rushed at times. Um, it feels like the first two books, the first book sets it up perfectly, and then the second book does a great job executing a middle portion. But at the end, Zahn had to quickly throw in a lot to resolve it because he wasn't allowed to do more books. And so it kind of feels disjointed in ways, and yet... It's still a very uh, well-written uh, trilogy. Um, uh, the side characters are great. There are the the aliens and the weird creatures on board the Ferantha are just fantastic. Uh, there are centaurs, which is just bizarre in a science fiction world. You have centaurs. There are centaurs, but there's also this like weird like buzzing creature that's like a bee, but not exactly a bee. And then there's also these other creatures that are like um, uh, uh, I would envision them almost something out of the Muppets. Almost um, there, there's just some bizarre creatures in this trilogy. Uh, it is very fun. It almost, except for the like the first chapter, it almost entirely takes place on board the Ferantha. So you're not seeing alien worlds, you're seeing everything on the Ferantha, this enormous ship. But as I said, it is such a huge ship that you're constantly exploring it and learning more about it. Um, uh, I saw some people online criticizing the book, saying that they felt that Timothy Zahn didn't write it, that someone like wrote under his name or something, and he just gave it to them. I don't think that's the case. For one, because this book's trilogy didn't do that well, sales-wise. And for two, it's because I can see Timothy Zahn's handwriting all over this. The main character, Nicole, is like pure Timothy Zahn storytelling. He loves his strong female character who's had a rough-and-tumble life, and now she's coming through to claim something for herself. And it's it, it just, this book very much felt quintessential Timothy Zahn, especially 
more newer Timothy Zahn, his newer books. So this was um, this is one book series that I recommend. It is not my favorite, however. I'm going. I'm kind of building up to my favorites of his. The next series on my list is called the Cobra series, which he's been developing. He's written nine books so far over the course of the last like. 30, 40 years. Now, I have to caution and say that I've only read the first three books of the Nine Cobra series, so I can't really say what the later books are like, but I can at least recommend the first trilogy, and that includes Cobra, which I apologize, my copies are all very old. They're, these are all copies from the 80s when he was writing it, and so as a result, they've uh, not had the best life as a book. Some of it's my fault, most of it's not. It's just decay. It happens with books. The first book's called Cobra. The second book is called Cobra Strike. And the third book is called Cobra Bargain. Now, I will emphasize the first book because the first book is the best, in my opinion. And it also uh, does what I wanted it to. This book is uh, basically a bunch. It's essentially like long short stories. Like, there's only like six chapters in the book. And they're like 50 pages long. And what this book does is it basically establishes that there, there are these um, uh, villains, the, uh, I'm blanking on the name of them right now, the Troths. I almost said Trollocs, but that's because I've been reeling Wheel of Time, not Trollocs, the Troths. The Troths are these villains that are from this other quadrant of space that are attacking, and uh, the good guys don't remember, they don't know how to fight them. So, but basically they try to do is they basically implant all this technology inside of their soldiers called the Cobras, and they send these soldiers out to fight the troughs, and as a result, they they become elite, awesome fighting forces. But at the same time, it creates a lot of PTSD. And what this trilogy does best is it deals with both politics in science fiction, and it deals with PTSD. Um, uh, Timothy Zahn really feels in this trilogy that he understands the plight of soldiers. More than any other author I've read, Timothy Zahn really cares about specifically U.S. troops. Uh, I've seen on his uh, Facebook, he's constantly thanking soldiers for their service, and he's very respectful to U.S. service members, and a lot of service members thank him because they feel like he nails soldiers in his books, and that's one of the strengths of this book. Also, some of the Cobras in the later books become uh, politicians, and as such, they understand military warfare because they were soldiers. And so Cobra Strike and Cobra Bargain deal with that. And I also really like Cobra Bargain because it deals with the next generation. Um, And uh, one thing this trilogy does that's interesting is one of the main characters, his name is Corwin. That is also the name of Timothy Zahn's son. I don't know whether he named the son after the character or the character after the son. I don't know the timetable there. It's just kind of humorous to me. Um, This was not Timothy Zahn's first novels he wrote, but it was very early on in his career. The first book was written, I believe, in 82 or 83, and Timothy Zahn didn't start writing full-time until uh, 1980. Uh, and I just looked, and it was eight, the first book was eighty five, and he didn't write this as a like a trilogy of each book following the next and the next. He wrote this as the first book standalone, and then you could read the next book and it stands alone, and then you can read the third book and it stands alone. So if you want to just read one book, just test it out. Don't you don't feel like you're missing story. He tells complete stories in each of the books, and this is good. It has that old classic sci-fi feel which is, I think, very important. Like, the, between the artwork and the writing style and the, um, the feel of the book in your hands, like, the even even the font was felt very classic sci-fi. And the next books I will discuss also have that classic sci-fi feel, and that is the Conqueror's Trilogy. You have Conqueror's Pride, you have Conqueror's Heritage, and then you have Conqueror's Legacy. This trilogy is much more, tr- like tight-knit trilogy, each book follows the last, except it does something that I've never seen before, which is that the second book follows the villains, whereas the first book follows the heroes. And I wouldn't even call them villains. I'd say the antagonists in the, in the trilogy. And 
the basic premise of the trilogy is the uh, Earth and its other, the main planet's uh, uh, army in Armana is is attacked by this alien group. And I want to make sure I get the name of the alien group. The Zerk. The Zerks. I don't know how to pronounce that. The Zerk. And so the humans are trying to fight against the Zerks. And um, uh, they're, they, they both... Both sides think that the other side caused the war. And it's a very interesting story about two sides of a war. And there are people on both sides trying to end the war. Um, Whereas the other books focused on... While the Cobra books focused on the soldiers and their PTSD, this book trilogy focuses more on the diplomats in the war trying to end the war. And there's this one family, um, and I want to get the name right of the family, the Kavanaugh's. The Kavanaugh family is throughout this whole trilogy. They are... They're some of the soldiers and the politicians and the admirals and the diplomats and the reporters and the scientists, and they're all over. And one of the Kavanaugh's is kidnapped by the Zerks. And the first book is about them trying to go save him. The second book is about the Zerks trying to counterattack. Third book is about both sides and the epic struggle. And it's just, it tells kind of a classic sci fi feel, but it starts to feel more nuanced than classic sci-fi novels felt. And it truly is an epic trilogy. Tim Zahn had just finished his Star Wars, original Star Wars trilogy, Heir to the Empire, during this time. And so he had just gotten a good, big trilogy. So he was starting to become a big name. And so this was a very popular series at the time. And I just, I loved every minute of reading these books. I think these are fantastic science fiction novels in just some of the best ways possible. And in fact... Of Timothy Zahn's non-Star Wars books, this is my favorite series, but not his fa- my favorite of his books. His, uh, I have two standalones I want to talk about for my top two. The second one is called The Icarus Hunt. This was published by Bantam Books, I believe, in like 1999, if I'm correct. Yes, August of 99, this was published. And... Um, it's a first-person science fiction book about this crew that basically has to uh, uh, go on this mission, and you basically are tracking them as they're flying the Icarus t- through space to try to deliver some sort of cargo. But the problem is there are people um, uh, following them, and so the crew of the Icarus uh, is trying to escape the bad guys while at the same time trying to get the goods to the good guys. And it's very, it's very tension based, and it's just, it was very well received by fans. Timothy Zahn has said this is the book that he gets the most requests for a sequel for, and I can totally see why he gets that. Um, uh, what this book does is it plays espionage and mystery really well. It does feel like a mystery set in space, and which is something that Timothy Zahn's always great at, is, is telling mystery. And so this book, it's a standalone. You can read it. It's all good. They just announced that there will be another book in this world called The Icarus Plot, but it's totally different characters, totally different time period. So you don't have to read this to read that, and you don't have to read that to read this. So this is a very excellent book by Timothy Zahn. But... The Cream of the Crop, what I think is his best novel, it was also the first one of his that I read, and I just think it's wonderful, is Angel Mass. That's probably too high. Angel Mass is this book that just, it follows like three different plot lines of characters that all interweave, and there's this big black hole that is causing havoc, and there's this war between these two peoples, and this one character, the main protagonist, um, uh, is sent uh, from the Earth-based empire, the, the Pax, to, um, uh, his name's Jericho Costa. He's sent over to um, basically spy and find out about the technology and about the wormhole and about uh, what's happening in there and in the, in the enemy's empire. And then you have the, um, uh, there's another character, uh, Chandris, who is kind of a grifter. She's kind of just um, uh, trying to get from point A to point B and survive. And she's just fallen around this world and she runs into him and gets caught up in his whole plot. And then you have some people who are just trying, who think that he's 
helping them when in reality he's a spy. And so as a result, there is a bunch of political espionage and thriller type of aspects. It's got some political thriller uh, storylines, and it's also got great science fiction moments. And I just have to say, look at that cover. That just is an epic cover, and it just feels like an epic sci-fi book. And so this is, again, standalone. It's a bit longer than most of his other books. This one's about 500 pages, but it's still a good book. And um, I think it is one of the best science fiction novels I've ever read. So those are five book or series recommendations from Timothy Zahn that I recommend. I think that they're all good reads. Some of them are better than others. But if you want to just jump in and read some science fiction from the master himself, I highly recommend you start somewhere here. Are there any that I'm missing? I know he does other series, and I've read some of the others. I don't recommend them as much, but I know he does some other great books. But are there any that you think I should have included? Are there any that you think that are just terrible that I shouldn't have included that are in here? Let me know uh, in the comments down below. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Please uh, feel free to share the video. You can find me on Facebook. You can find my book reviews at Roku Depot. But until next time, my name is Jonathan Cohn, and thank you for watching.